All right, so welcome to the first episode of Killing the Caveman. So in this episode, I'm going to be talking about why COBOL is needed now and why it should have died 20, 20 years ago. It's 2020 right now. And why governments suddenly need programmers for it. All right, recently due to the pandemic, there has been a really big need for some governments and businesses to have an old software be worked on that was built in COBOL. Because I think there's like millions of lines of code that are currently still written in COBOL. So if you don't know what COBOL is, it is an old language used for business. In fact, the acronym is Common Business Oriented Language. Or that's, uh, yeah, that's common is the CO, and then business is the B, of course, and then oriented is the O and language. Common Oriented Business Language. Ah! <laughs> you know what I mean. This is probably the most boring acronym I have ever heard, by the way. Like, business has the word business and common in it. Those are like very boring words. Never mind. Let me know in the comments if you think there's a more boring acronym that you can think of. So the language should have gotten been gotten rid of like many, many years ago. But governments refused to get rid of it in favor of new modern languages and technologies because these new modern languages and technologies cost money. And now these governments are faced with um, the consequences of not replacing them. Um, so because most of these people who know COBOL are of course retired now and because nobody wants to learn it of course and we'll get to reasons why. And so no one can fix it or maintain it if there's an issue. So let's get to the history of what COBOL is and why was it used. So COBOL was made in 1960. So if you started to learn or started to use COBOL like right out of college when you like turned 20 or something like that, you would be 80 years old because that's 60 years ago, 1960. Ridiculous. So you can kind of guess why people who developed with this language are retired now because of course most people retire around 65 years old so if most people started at, or started using this language in like 1975 then they're probably retired by now so you might be wondering why are these places still using this language why why haven't they replaced it like what what purpose does it have other than that it's too expensive to replace for the local government or businesses. And of course, the main reason is main, or three words, mainframe processing speed, MPS. <laughs> and it's also the cost associated with replacing it with these new newer technologies, because then you would have to hire developers, and developers don't cost a lot nowadays, or they do cost a lot. They're very expensive compared to other engineers, or software engineers are more expensive generally than other kinds of engineers. So, and oftentimes people don't want to spend all their money just developing like software that not, not many people are going to use. All right, so I want to show you an article on Ars Technica about how or why IBM is scrambling to find or train more COBOL programmers to help states. So this is kind of, <laughs> look at these old computers here. They're so, I don't even know what to like think about them. They look like washing machines or like, something to do my laundry with or something like that. <laughs> this looks, looks like a kitchen countertop too. And I don't know what these things on the side are, but seem interesting. But anyways, New Jersey is one of the states that needs COBOL programmers to help with the state's unemployment insurance system. So that's, this is kind of one of the, the uses of COBOL because this unemployment system probably hasn't seen much use for a long, long time, because if you didn't know, the unemployment rate prior to um, recent uh, happenings has been very low. It's been record lows for um, the last couple of years, I think. I mean, of course, since like 2008, it's been low. So since that time, though, they probably had a lot of people to work on Cobol, or Co well, not like a lot of people, but some people to work on Cobol back during that time. But now that um, everything is modernized and the unemployment rate is like skyrocketed recently, they need more people, or more people are going through um, to file for unemployment, of course. So 
IBM is trying to like train people to work in COBOL, but um, like I said, most COBOL, most experienced COBOL programmers aren't getting any younger. So I mean, no one's getting any younger, but I, they're not going to have time to train people with um, to meet all their demands in the amount of time because COBOL is not an easy language. And I'll show you some examples. So I do want to show you another example of how COBOL was used and why people needed COBOL developers. So in Kansas, government Laura Kelly said the State Department of Labor was in the process of modernizing COBOL, but uh, the virus came in and they couldn't do it, of course, or at least they're not able to do it in time for this pandemic. So they're operating on really old stuff currently, and of course, that's gonna slow down things. So I mentioned that it was made in like 1960, 1959. Well, it is a programming language used or very significant percentage of business systems over the period of 60s, 70s, and even the 80s. So what about the 90s, the zeros, and the teens? Why haven't people replaced it since then? That's 30 years, even during like high usage, maybe 20 years. So that's kind of ridiculous how they haven't replaced this. I see now that the 220 billion lines of COBOL code in use today. I don't know about you, but that's a lot of lines of code. And the lines of code for COBOL are very verbose, but even still, that's kind of crazy. 43% of banking systems, 90% of ATMs. What? That's ridiculous. 95% of ATMs? Like, you might be thinking, what can you replace that with? And that's a good question. All right. so. COBOL was kind of like the enterprise programming language for this old time era. So it, of course, can be replaced with anything enterprise nowadays, which it can be a variety of languages, Python, Java, JavaScript, C++. Really, it can even do, be done on assembly. It doesn't really matter what you replace it with as long as it is at least efficient. <laughs> so let me show you some cool things about COBOL. So it's the first high level or is widely used high-level programming language, and it's English-like in structure. That's probably the unique thing about COBOL. So it has self-documentating. So what that means is you don't have to like make your own documents elsewhere because it's so verbose. And it can handle huge data processing, which of course isn't huge enough at this uh, during times of need like this. And of course, error messaging is useful. So I want to show you now a hello world program in COBOL and see what it's like. All right, of course I'm not an expert in COBOL because I'm not from uh, the dinosaur area, but I can probably see the, um, the basics of it. So display, you s it's kind of like use real world, real words to display things. So display, you can say, say hello world. You can move tutorial point, um, I don't know where is that defined, to WS name, I guess. And then you, okay, this is another display. So hello, my name is, and then my ID, my ID is. So you can execute it and then it'll say, hello world, my name is, oh, okay. So they de kind of declared tutorial point to be their name and then their ID was, um, that's really cool. Or, I mean, it's, it's really like interesting how they did it. But this seems like this could be done in like a line of code <laughs> in like almost any other language or maybe like three lines of code. So it's kind of crazy. So this is just like how many lines? Three, six, it's like at least 10, 15 lines of code just for something simple as this. So that's kind of ridiculous. All right, so what makes COBOL so bad? And as you can see a little bit there is it is verbose. It requires a lot of words to to do very simple things. And I didn't show you much COBOL code, but it is difficult to read COBOL code. Like, uh, that was pretty, pretty difficult to read because there were so many lines of code and you had to figure out what was going on. And the ver verbose part was, wasn't was too useful in the self-documentating part because usually good code doesn't need documentation. So programs written in COBOL were also difficult to read and hard to modularize into different little pieces, which made to them made them have kind of a lack of structure, which is not good for a programming language. So 
Uh, if you have ever heard of the um, famer, famous computer scientist, Eds, Edsger Dijkstra, Dijkstra's fr like uh, he's he made Dijkstra's algorithm. So if you don't know what that is, it is an algorithm that almost everyone who takes a computer science um, class called like data structure and algorithm needs to know Dijkstra's algorithms to be somewhat good at data structures and algorithms. So he, Dijkstra, criticized COBOL, because this is back in the day when he was algorithming. <laughs> That's a word. So he said, the use of COBOL cripples the mind, and I can kind of understand why. So um, that's the end of this COBOL video. Thanks for watching.